I have told you, nations of Israel and the people of Judah, I have told you with plain words what is going to happen to you at the end time, before the end of this age comes and the Messiah returns. I have told you plainly because of your sins, because of your wickedness, you are going to have to be punished. You are going to have to go into captivity to your enemy lovers. You will be scattered. You will indeed have God's wrath upon you for a short while. But eventually there is good news. Let's read about the good news. This Feast of Tabernacles especially is devoted to the good news of the age to come. So we'll read what Jeremiah was inspired to write. Jeremiah chapter 30. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Write you all the words that I have spoken unto you in a book. For lo, the days come, says the Lord, that I will again bring the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Thus says the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask you now, do you see a man travailing with a child, or like with child? Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? All faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the time of Israel's trouble. All of the twelve tribes of Israel, the house of Judah, which is only three tribes, Judah, Levi, and Benjamin, and then the ten-nation house of Israel that indeed was taken captive by the Assyrians and then moved as the Assyrians moved when the Babylonian Empire came up into the area of the Black Sea, into Eastern Europe and across Europe. And as today, those nations are indeed formed a lot, a lot. The most important nations of the Western world are indeed the people of the house of Israel. And there is coming a time then of Israel, all twelve tribed Israel, a time of trouble like as never has been on this earth from the beginning and never will be again. But God says, he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off your neck, and I will burst your chains, and strangers shall no more serve themselves on you, but they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. This is an end time prophecy, my friends. David will be resurrected. And he will be the king over the twelve tribe Israel. The twelve apostles will each rule a tribe of Israel, as Jesus promised to them in the gospel. Jeremiah 30, verse 10. Therefore fear you not, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest and be quiet. There is no nation on the face of this earth today, my friends, that are in rest. And none, it goes on to say, shall make him afraid. Is there any nation on the face of this earth that is not afraid of what may happen from other nations 
that have the nuclear weapons? This is a prophecy for the very end time. Verse 11, for I am with you, says the Lord, to save you, though I make a full end of the nations where I've scattered you, yet will I not make a full end of you, but I will correct you in measure and will not leave you altogether unpunished. For thus says the Lord, your bruise seems that it's incurable and your wound is grievous. grievous. There is none to plead your cause that you may be bound up. You have no healing medicines. All your lovers have forgotten you. They seek you not. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquities. That's why it's coming upon you at this end time. For your iniquities are multiplied. Every week and every month, you break the commandments of God. You bring in laws that are against the commandments of God. You have multiplied your wickedness. And because they were increased, the Lord says, you cry for your affliction, yes? You're going to have to be punished and afflicted. Your sorrow seems to be incurable for the multitude of your iniquities because your sins were increased. I have done these things unto you. The punishment that is coming upon the nations of Israel and the people of Judah is because of your sins and the increase of your wickedness. Verse 16, therefore all they that devour you shall be devoured and all your adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil you shall be spoiled. And all that prey upon you will I give for prey. For I will restore you. I will heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. Because they called you an outcast, saying, Oh, this is Zion. This was some kind of special people whom no man now seeks after. Thus says the Lord, verse 18, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy upon his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon her desolation, on her rubble, and the palace shall remain the man in the manner thereof. Yes, you will build good houses again that will remain. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will multiply. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. The children of Israel shall be as aforetime and their congregation shall be established before me and I will punish all that oppress them. And there shall be nobles coming out of them, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. Israel and Judah at that time will indeed very much want to approach unto the eternal God. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engages his heart to approach unto me, says the Lord, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goes forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The Lord is going to use his mighty power and strength on this earth at the end time, and he's going to use his power and strength against the wicked. Verse 24, the fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he has done it, until he has performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it. In the latter days, you shall consider it. There are things that I have expounded to you on my YouTubes from the prophets of the Old Testament that are going to come to pass. 
they're going to take place. You need to be studying the Word of God. You need to be preparing yourself for the end times. You need to be on the Lord's side when He decides to shake, rattle, and roll this earth. And you then can have the joy of the prophecies that are after this destruction, that are after the Lord has reigned his fury, and the prophecies of the new age, and you will be able to be in the resurrection of the coming of Christ, the first resurrection, to be with Christ, to help to rule with him. He will give him, he will give people jobs to do. He will give people on his side governance over the earth to bring in the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the seabeds. What a wonderful age that will be.